Delegates gathered at the School of Oriental and African Studies in London for one of two conferences of the Iqbal Academy. With degrees from London and Germany, Muhammad Iqbal became a lawyer in his home country of Pakistan. But it's his poetry and philosophy that have created a lasting influence on Muslim thinking. Iqbal taught the spirit of tolerance and cooperation. He said that instead of just uh, sulking or criticizing or feeling inferior, you should say we have our strengths and the West have their strengths. We should neither deny our strength nor shall we uh, deny our own weaknesses and the same applies to the West. So he brought a spirit of reconciliation between the two systems. And from the start of this conference, Professor Durrani set out to demonstrate this by quoting from some of Iqbal's poetry. Thus speaking of the strength of the Western civilization, Iqbal says, the strength of the West comes not from the dulcimer of the liar, nor does it spring from the converting of veilless beauties. Its solidity does not stem from godlessness, nor does its ascendancy re result from the Latin script. The strength of the West comes from science and technology. This is the fire that lights its lamp so brightly. Britain's first Muslim peer said he had not studied Iqbal's texts, but he was convinced of the relevance of his thinking today. This is also a fantastic event because it is about Iqbal, a bridge between East and West. And today, when there's so much confusion about Islam and modernity, and there's so much pressure that we should have reformation of Islam and a lot of other uh, external pressures on Islam and Muslims, um, I think that it is right that we discuss uh, amongst ourselves and with our friends that this uh, uh, refer critical uh, 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 modernization or reformation debate started long time ago. The and the philosopher's son, who was unable to attend because of illness, sent a message by video about his father's spiritual thinking. Because there is no ask. His argument proceeds like this. The ultimate reality, according to the Quran, is spiritual, and its life consists in its temporal activities. The spirit finds its opportunities in the natural, material, and the secular. All that is secular is therefore sacred in the roots of its being. The greatest service that modern thought has rendered to Islam, and as a matter of fact to all religions, consists in its criticism of what we call material or natural, a criticism which discloses that the merely material has no substance until we discover it rooted in the spirit. There is no such thing as a profane world. The first session of this conference ended with a recitation of Iqbal's poetry by Dudzana Ansari, who works for the BBC World Service.